What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Monday night, September 11th, 2023, about 10:35 uh, p.m. here, California time. Latest activity looks like we got some movement kicking up here across the northern edge here of the Pacific Plate, with a 4.5 earthquake coming in in the last oh, about 10 minutes or so up in Alaska. Fairly shallow at about 51 kilometers deep. Notice we have seen some movement over here across the Kuril Kamachaka and the Japan area. Continue to watch this here for some potential larger scale movement. Uh, overall seismic activity somewhat active out here across the western areas of the Pacific Plate and the adjacent plate here, the Filipino Plate, showing uh, some movement. Also 5.4 into the Chile area, 109 kilometers deep there within the last hour. All right, see what we got here across the area of Indonesia. Of course, we did see that large earthquake this morning at 6.0 into the um, areas around the Maluka Sea, 162 kilometers deep. Uh, we'll watch this area potentially for some movement considering that depth of the earthquake. Uh, looking at the Earthquake 3D globe, it looks like there is some uh, activity stirring up here just north of that six pointer. The white rings there uh, kind of hugged onto the surface indicating some shallower or earthquake activity. Uh, further to the east here, got Solomon Islands filling in slightly within the last few hours. Um, got a 5.1 and uh, looks like a 4.7. That was earlier this morning. Uh, what do we got here? Loyalty Islands kicking up. So things are starting to ramp up here across this area. Has been somewhat quiet. Things are uh, filling in in that area nicely across the area of New Zealand. Uh, that's a different story. There's just not a whole lot popping up down there uh, into the New Zealand area. It's been our quiet zone for quite some time, and it's just a little odd uh, that we have not seen any type of sufficient movement down there. Uh, the latest information here from the GeoNet servers, it looks like there was a couple earthquakes down there. Uh, 3.1 South Island area about four hours or so ago. Um... What is this? Okay, it looks like something's not uh, working properly. Shaking map. Looks like a few folks did report it around Wellington, but either way, that's kind of a smaller earthquake. Uh, the earthquake drums out here will probably show that, uh, but not much else. <laughs> New Zealand, uh, pretty quiet. There's that earthquake in question down there. Uh, looks like just outside the uh, Christchurch area of South Island, New Zealand. Aside from that, Pretty quiet, as we can see here across the board. Hawaii, well, Kilauea Volcano continuing, right? But the earthquake activity has halted. Look at that. And that's typical during, um, well, I should say after the magma finds its way to the surface there to create lava, right? The, the flow is now uh, pretty much going to be harmonic tremor if we look on a seismograph station. Fluid movement, so to speak. Uh, in this case, of course, magma coming to the surface, but no earthquake activity, and that is because it's found a, well, it's found an easy route there around the crater uh, area, lava lake of the Kilauea volcano. I want to double check the latest information here, see what we got, maybe check out a couple webcams out here from the USGS, uh, see if anything's stirring up out there. I'm sure it is. Look at that goodness. That's beautiful, absolutely beautiful at night. Uh, I'm sure the web or the um, the YouTube live stream there from the USGS is probably awesome looking as well. But uh, <clears throat> goodness, let's lighten up quite nicely there with rivers of lava just all over the uh, the lava lake area. Let's see what other ones we got here. A couple other seismograph stations. K2 Cam. That one's not quite as active. K1. Let's see what we got here. That looks pretty dark. Hard to say, maybe uh, that's M1. There we go, There's a. that's kind of a zoomed in shot it looks like from the observation tower. You can see the reflection of the, the glass or the plexiglass, whatever they use up here. Uh, but yeah, still pretty active across the area with uh, looks like some fountaining and whatnot going on out there. Pretty neat looking uh, to say the least. Or is this from the observation tower? This almost looks like it's a... Uh, it's hard to see what this shadow is. All right, maybe a chair? 
All right, let's see what we got here for the uh, seismograph stations. I'm kind of curious to see if we can see anything on them. Notice the earthquake activity, as mentioned, has been, you know, completely squashed. I'm really not seeing any um, that typical tremor, the volcanic tremor that you see during e the eruption. Uh, but I'm sure it's in there if we were to, if they were to downsize this map a little bit as far as the amplitudes go. But yeah, earthquake activity probably will not kick back up again unless we get some major uh, infeed there from the areas below. Tilt meter, I'm sure, is dropping uh, pretty nicely as well. It did rise up here just before the eruption and then uh, slowly coming back down, indicating, uh, you know, the release of the uh, built up activity below. All right, uh, let's see what else do we have here. Anything major going on? Uh, there's that earthquake down in South America, 5.4. Uh, we did have some further activity earlier this afternoon. Pretty deep movement uh, with that 4.1. Basically, down dip here of this subduction zone, which is the Peru Chile Trench. This was uh, 331 kilometers deep. So that is adding some strain up here. That's why we're noticing some uh, earthquake activity upstream, so to speak. Deeper movement on the right side of the map, uh, shallower up towards the subduction zone area. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, maybe for some further movement out into the Atlantic. 5.9, that was kicking off earlier this morning, it looks like, about 2 o'clock in the morning or so. Uh, the rest of the globe, let's see what we have going on here. Looks like a 3.0 coming into the uh, Mediterranean area. And there's a 5.0 up there. Now, I don't know if this is a legit earthquake. Again, you know, I have to mention it because a lot of times the GeoNet or the... Uh, EMSC models here throw out some false readings on the earthquake 3D map. And uh, it looks like that's definitely going to be a, uh, some type of false reading because I'm not seeing a 5.0 up here. And that looks like it's, uh, that was from about 640, only a couple, a few hours old here. This is going to be my time. So that more than likely is going to be one of these smaller quakes, a 2.5. I just don't know why it, uh, it comes up like that. Let me close this out and see what happens. And then I'll fire this thing back up. Maybe resetting it will get rid of that larger earthquake. And then again, maybe it didn't. So that tells me right there that it's not on the earthquake 3D side, but it's more so on the EMSC model. Um, lack of removing it, I guess. All right. Um, what's this earthquake down here? 3.0. What's that most recent quake? Um, ch -ch -ch -ch, anything else going on that we need to be aware of? The states look awfully quiet. Let me double check and see what's going on over here. Got a little bit of movement outside of San Antonio down here near Stockdale, Falls City area. I'm um, pretty certain I know what's out there. We'll zoom in here and just double check, right? These oil fields galore. Quite a bit of them, uh, really close to these operations. So we got uh, the oil fields getting hit out here slightly with some earthquake activity there in Texas. Also outside of the Pecos, Texas region, seeing some movement up into Yellowstone. This has been another area that's been seeing some slight microquake swarming. Although it looks like uh, for the most part, that was um, earlier, much earlier this morning with a handful of smaller quakes here throughout the afternoon and evening, but overall seismic activity. Uh, to me, looking at these graphs, look pretty quiet for Yellowstone. It's been a while since we've had a significant swarm, uh, but you never know, it could pop up anytime. All right, uh, continued activity around Mount St. Helens. The latest earthquake shows a 0.1. Let's double check that and see what we got there for Mount St. Helens up there into the uh, Pacific Northwest which is currently at a green color code, indicating that things are normal. What is normal? That's the question, right? Let's go ahead and check out uh, the station right here. Still looking like some earthquake activity out here. And the ones that I'm seeing, or, or maybe some of these bigger ones, see these uh, broader type signatures. And those earthquakes themselves do show up on other seismograph stations. Uh, which leads me to believe that uh, it's some type of activity there underneath the 
area of Mount St. Helens. I wish some of these other seismograph stations worked, but they don't, so I'm limited on what I can check with it. This one's not working either. Say, for example, if these others were working and we got that same type of signature, then we would know that it's legit activity occurring below the crater area of Mount St. Helens, but uh, a lot of these are not working. There's that activity still showing up there. So yeah, there's I'd, I'd still say there's definitely some earthquake activity and just kind of watching that up there around the Mount St. Helens area. Some of it could be wind, you know, some of these other smaller signatures, but uh, there's definitely some earthquake activity occurring there. And they're showing a handful of them. All right, uh, throughout the uh, Oregon area, let me double check the trimmer map here tonight before I get too far off. Um, where did it go? There we go. This is looking right at it. Northern California and a little bit there along the central coast of Oregon for a total tally of 259 epicenters. And if you notice here, we haven't really had any major tremor uptick since we're coming up on almost a year now, back in October of last year. That was our last significant uptick elevated tremor event. We've had a couple low-grade ones since then, but uh, if you follow this pattern here, these intervals of large spikes, we should have had you know, it almost looks like we should have had something by now. There's been quiet times in the past. Um, what that means, I don't know if that means that there's not enough pressure out here along the Cascadia. Or, you know, maybe things are stuck down into the uh, subduction zone there. Maybe there's just not a lot of slippage going on down there uh, into the deeper regions of the Cascadia. Uh, either way, just kind of watching that, seeing uh, if it kicks up. Either way, some, it almost looks like a little bit of elevated activity right now in northern cal 259 that's yeah that's a pretty good number so we'll continue to watch that uh, there hasn't really been too much earthquake activity uh, following that trimmer underneath this area so uh, just see how it goes 2.4 meadow valley california still seeing a little bit of movement up here onto the rocky ledge fault this area did see a 5.0 here a couple days ago Aftershock activity looks like that's continuing slightly. Uh, the rest of California here, very minimal for the most part. There's that activity out here off the San Andreas Fault. Most of this here is from yesterday. Doesn't look like we've seen anything new today across this area. Uh, but for the most part, small microquake activity across the San Jacinto Fault Zone. All right, uh, there's that one over into the uh, Russia area. That was earlier this afternoon. So it looks like things may be uh, attempting to pick up here across this plate boundary. Keep an eye on that. Seismograph stations right now look pretty calm. Not seeing any large earthquakes being produced out there or even any moderate ones. Okay, now we're hitting the blackout again. Uh, the spacecraft or the space... Uh, who is it? Um can't remember the name of this um, the operation that keeps track of the flares but either way sometimes that gets eclipsed eclipsed uh, by the moon and um, we see the shadow uh, eclipse the sun in this imagery and that is the uh, it's either I'm pretty certain that it's the moon I looked that up a few months ago and that's what they claim that uh, is blocking out the sun um, when it comes to these data blackouts every 24 hours all right Moving on here, a little bit of flaring. Is, is this recent? Looks pretty, uh, looks like some nice activity stirring up out here across sunspot number, gonna be 3425. The latest imagery does show uh, quite the connection here of uh, magnetic structure within that sunspot. This one's grown pretty nicely as well. Um, I don't know if this harbors any major potential for strong flares, but there's definitely some flaring being produced right now. Uh, looks like we're starting to peek up into the sea flare category. Just coming back from that data blackout. 99% chance for sea flare. M flare at 55. X flare has been somewhat elevated to 10. Uh, that's due to, well, it looks like quite a few sunspots harboring a beta gamma or a beta delta class here. And this one up here, 34, uh, 3425, is going to be harboring uh, a beta structure, I guess. That's what it says right there. 3423 is probably one of the uh, 
more complex ones, right? Beta Gamma. Either way, we'll continue to monitor all these and uh, see how it plays out. A little bit of flaring coming off of uh, this little sunspot down here as well. These bright features are that indicative uh, activity in the flare department. All right, uh, anything major going on for the auroras? Doesn't look like it. Things are pretty calm, pretty clear. Uh, what's Kevin got here? Composite look at the earth-facing side of the sun. Uh, let's see, not seeing anything really major that uh, is noteworthy. Uh, looks like maybe a number of small coronal holes are now facing the planet and a potential enhanced solar wind environment should be expected over the next 48 to 72 hours. So we'll see if anything kicks up. Coronal holes are going to be this one right here and a couple of these. Uh, of course, this is high speed solar wind stream flowing freely and uh, yeah, a couple of these, at least one directly facing Earth. So we'll continue to Maybe keep an eye on the forecast, see if this uh, kicks up any auroras at the higher latitudes. Uh, latest information here on Hurricane Lee, which is out in the Atlantic and currently got pressure up around 100 or uh, wind, sustained winds at 115 miles per hour. Uh, moving to the west northwest at about 7 miles per hour, this is expected to take a due north turn here. Um, potentially missing the Bermuda area. I have to keep an eye on that. Uh, but uh, we'll continue to watch this. The forecast line here shows it heading straight up north towards the uh, Nova Scotia area as a tropical storm once it gets up there. Uh, let's double check the uh, numerical models and see what that wants to do. Here across the North Atlantic, there is Hurricane Lee, which is again expected to get caught up in this low pressure system out here you'll be able to see it pull it uh, due north here watch off the east coast right there and um, yeah it looks like it may hit the uh, extreme northeast up there we'll definitely watch that and then there's there's another hurricane behind that that we're gonna have to watch this one here is a little on the wish-washy side look at this 952 that's the pressure down there uh, into that tropical system. Look what it does as we put it into motion. It wants to follow the same path as Hurricane Lee, uh, but it's there's a different setup. The patterns are different out here. You got high pressure to the west, high pressure to the east, and uh, this is going to be a little scary situation here. We'll have to watch that because that could pull uh, this counter or this clockwise motion here in the northern hemisphere could push that down and uh, over towards the east coast here look as it wobbles around and um that's going to be one to watch i believe that's going to be uh, a newly developed one coming off of the uh africa region this low down here that tropical system looks like it gains pretty quickly and uh that's the one that we're going to watch let me go back over here to the uh National Hurricane Center. See if they're chatting about that yet. That's going to be this one. Um, Disturbance 1 is the current name. Uh, it does have a formation chance through the next seven days, of course. Very high, 70%. So we'll continue to watch that. That's going to be one to watch. Again, that's a ways out. Obviously, those weather models are a ways out, and a lot can change. But uh, we'll continue to check back on that. Any threat out here to the mainland, definitely worth watching. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Uh, it's, oh, it's been a Monday, that's for sure. It's been a Monday. I will catch you guys back here tomorrow, Tuesday. Until then, have a good night. Stay safe out there. And uh, make, sure you have, make sure you guys have an earthquake plan. It's very important out there, no matter where you're at. Um, I'll catch you guys back here in the morning. Take care.